People generally don't like a monopoly unless it is a board game. From the average Joe's perspective, one company or a few companies having a stranglehold over a specific market is often bad for the customer. After all, competition is good. It means that companies compete by selling different and more innovative products that set themselves apart from the competition, and this in turn gives the customer a lot of options where they can decide for themselves what products they want to buy. How quaint. But unfortunately, many wealthier companies have a different strategy that benefits their irrespective corporations more so than the customer. See, when a large company has an obscene amount of money, they may want to just buy out their comparatively smaller competitors and essentially eliminates the competition by acquiring them and their products, which is bad news for the customer because these acquisitions get rid of a key competitor and homogenizes and consolidates the market, usually ensuring that customers have less options than before, a la Disney's buyout of 20th Century Fox, which really sucked for everyone who wants to see a more diverse lineup of films than just ones greenlit by Disney. But hey, at least the X-Men and the Fantastic Four can be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so perspective, I guess? Maybe? It's not a good thing. Microsoft is in the same boat here. In fact, the company behind the Xbox has lately been acquiring video game developers and even publishers left and right, as if they were panic buying bananas at a grocery store after learning that it might snow two whole damn inches. And over the past few years, Microsoft has acquired Ninja Theory, Double Fine, and ZeniMax, a company that owns Bethesda, id Software, and loads of other developers. But Microsoft's most recent acquisition of Activision Blizzard takes the proverbial ice cream cake here. See, for a paltry, modest sum of $68.7 billion, Microsoft is buying the Activision Blizzard, the once third-party publisher behind hits like Call of Duty, Overwatch, World of Warcraft, Starcraft, Diablo, Guitar Hero, and arguably the biggest gender discrimination nation scandal in video game history. Can you see the dollar signs? Because Microsoft can. In a press release, Microsoft touted how it's looking forward to adding Activision Blizzard's catalog of games to Xbox Game Pass, what this means in the virtual world in terms of the metaverse, and that Microsoft's purchase of Activision Blizzard will bring the joy and community of gaming to everyone across every device, unless of course that device is a PlayStation 5. So with all that being said, what does this mean for the customer? For Forget that one of the big reasons Microsoft made this blockbuster purchase was due to the metaverse because I couldn't give two or three shits about the perspective virtual world. No, I'm asking what does this mean for the gamer? And to start answering, the simple word is exclusivity. It means that many franchises which were once multi-platform will likely now be exclusive on Xbox and PC, meaning that series which normally had coinciding Xbox and PlayStation releases will now likely only be on Xbox and PC. Franchises like Call of Duty get Guitar Hero, and etc. will likely no longer be multi-platform. They will probably be Xbox exclusive games like Halo, Gears of War, Forza, and the rest of Microsoft's catalog. And if you want to play these games on console, then you'll have to pony up some money for an Xbox, because if you only have a PlayStation, then you're shit out of luck. Admittedly, these games being Xbox exclusives is purely speculative on my part. As of this recording, Microsoft hasn't announced that future Call of Duty or Diablo releases will only be on Xbox after all. But given Microsoft's track record with how it plans to release future games by its acquired studios like Bethesda as Xbox exclusives, see Starfield, it's basically a foregone conclusion that future installments of these games will never be on a PlayStation platform, which is especially ironic because some of the franchises Microsoft now owns were once PlayStation exclusives back in the day, which is sad and is bad news for everyone who doesn't play on Xbox, obviously. Because honestly, Microsoft isn't necessarily creating value for their product so much as they are removing the value of their competitor products, like the PlayStation 5. And that's something that ultimately benefits Microsoft more so than the customer. It benefits the company over us. However, one way in which the Activision Blizzard acquisition does benefit Xbox customers is through those that are subscribed to Xbox Game Pass. For those who need a refresher, Game Pass is Microsoft's video game subscription service that is essentially the definitive Netflix for games, where rentable third-party games and first-party Xbox titles like Halo, Gears of War, and Forza can be downloaded and played with a subscription, something that is especially a big deal for Xbox console exclusives, seeing as they are available to download with a subscription 
Activision on the day of release. And this honestly puts the Activision Blizzard acquisition in perspective, because past Activision Blizzard games will be playable on Game Pass, and future Activision Blizzard games will be available for download on the service on day one of release. And honestly, the Activision Blizzard purchase bolsters the subscription service's already stellar lineup, and will ensure that more people engage with their Xbox consoles, which is the primary business metric that Microsoft uses to measure the health of the Xbox platform. See my recent video on Xbox Game Pass if you want to go down that specific rabbit hole. But with all that being said, Microsoft acquired more than just games when it bought Activision Blizzard. In fact, it acquired the company's extensive baggage, by which I mean the gender discrimination scandal that has rocked the company over the past year. For those unaware, Activision Blizzard was sued by the state of California back in mid-2021, a lawsuit that continually referred to Activision Blizzard's workplace culture as being akin to that of a frat house and that female employees were routinely discriminated against. Through the descriptions in the lawsuit and other damning reports, women are routinely paid less than men, women are hired less often, women are promoted less and terminated more quickly, there were cube crawls where male employees drink a lot of beer and crawl through various cubicles and engage in inappropriate behavior towards their female co-workers, there was a lot of insensitive language about female bodies, sexual conquests, and rape jokes, there's a bevy of verbal and even physical sexual harassment via groping, and there were little to no consequences for those engaging in these activities. One of these harassments caused a woman to commit suicide while on a business trip with an abuser. There's the quid pro quo effect, or the you do something for me and I'll do something for you agreement. There is the horribly named Cosby Suite, which is a whole separate topic in and of itself. There's retaliation against those who speak out. HR defended the company rather than support victims. Higher ups in the company, like former Blizzard president Jay Allen Bragg, who stepped down when these allegations came to light, and Activision Blizzard CEO Bobby Kotick were complicit in the harassment. They were aware. Hell, Kotick especially. In fact, Kotick once left a voicemail threatening to have his assistant killed back in 2006. Kotick protected various abusers at the company. In certain instances, he avoided telling the board of misconduct, and he reportedly considered buying outlets critical of him like Kotaku and PC Gamer in order to change the coverage surrounding Activision Blizzard Wow, what a piece of shit. So yeah, this is all pretty heavy and depressing, but it's worth mentioning because that's what Microsoft ultimately acquired when they bought Activision Blizzard. They bought the company's controversy alongside their bevy of titles. They acquired Activision Blizzard's problems. And honestly, I really hope Microsoft deep cleans the cesspool that is Activision Blizzard. While sure, many abusers are no longer with the company and CEO Bobby Kotick reportedly plans to leave Activision Blizzard, once the buyout is complete, there's still a lot of work that Microsoft needs to do in order to get that anti Blizz stank out. Maybe they can repair the damage, we shall see, though given this industry's track record, I'm not necessarily holding my breath, to be honest. But still, even if Microsoft successfully rehabilitates Activision Blizzard's dumpster fire of an image, there's still the fact that monopolies are antithetical to a healthy marketplace. After all, to use Disney as an example again, Disney's buyout of Fox has really homogenized Hollywood's output and has made the American film industry's creative stagnancy far more noticeable, and I worry that Microsoft purchase of Activision Blizzard will be the same. While Microsoft gives the appearance of being more creatively benevolent in terms of its business strategies and views accessibility and archiving games as being important to the health of the medium, it is still a company first and foremostly. Its primary goal is to make money and then make even more money next year. And honestly, I don't care how nice Xbox head Phil Spencer's jowls look, because truly a company is not your friend. And Microsoft's purchase is worth being concerned about, because how many more of these buyouts should we expect? What other companies plan to buy other publishers? Hell, we don't even know if Microsoft is done with their own spending spree yet, and that's honestly disconcerting. Is Ubisoft next? Is EA? Are Konami's pachinko machines on the table? Because clearly if Microsoft has enough money, there isn't a lot preventing them from being a monopoly. And with that, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like rating, subscribe, ring the bell, share, and leave a comment telling me what you think of this acquisition. Also, please consider checking out my Patreon page. The link is in the description. And speaking of Patreon, I just want to thank my patrons, especially my high tier ones and David, Samantha, Devlin, Mom, and Morgan. Thank you so much for supporting what I do. Love y'all. God, I can't wait till Bobby Kotick's gone.